What is up, YTPC? Andrew here, aka Bluefin Piper, coming at you from another absolutely beautiful weekend here in New Jersey. I hope everyone out there in the YTPC is doing well, and I hope you guys are all enjoying a nice weekend. Well, we had some pretty, uh, pretty interesting weather moving through this week. Some uh, I was out in Allentown, Pennsylvania, had some hail, tornado warnings, and a lot of rain moving through. So. Uh, happy to uh, have that out of the way and it's been a been a really beautiful weekend here so just uh finally getting a chance to sit down and enjoy a chat with you guys i thought i would uh share share a few things uh, going on and also talk a little bit about a tobacco i have been uh, long overdue in doing a short impression review for well shout out to finn <laughs> doing his cameo um, so we will get to that in a little bit first up I am smoking my Savinelli Series 3 Unfinished. This is a 613 Bent Brandy uh, from the Pipe Nook, uh, 9mm, and I'm not sure if you guys will see with the shade here, but it is really uh, coloring up really nice, and I'm really enjoying it. So, as I said, wanted to chat with you guys a little bit before we get to the uh, tobacco review. Uh, we're going to talk about the Gowith and Hogarth Cherry Cream Cherry Cream Flake. So thanks to again to Kevin Hendricks for turning me on to that blend. But uh, before we do that, had a really fun week uh, this past week. Uh, busy with work, but uh, also a short week with the holiday last Monday. But uh, managed to uh, get to Allentown and got to go to again another meeting of the Lehigh Valley Pipe Club. So a little shout out to the guys there at the Pipe Club. Had a, had a fantastic time at the Wooden Match. Uh, just a really fun location. Get to sit inside, chat, smoke, have some good food, uh, drink some good beer. Uh, so overall, it was a great time. I'm not quite at the point. It's only my second meeting there. So I think maybe next time I'll try to get some pictures or video. I'm not quite at the point yet where I felt comfortable breaking out the camera and uh, you know videoing a bunch of uh, folks that uh, I don't know too well yet. But... I will get there. I'd love to show you guys the place itself because it's really cool. Old train station that they turned into this bar uh, that allows cigar, uh, cigar and uh, pipe smoking. So, um, well, while we were there, I thought I would mention, um, got to smoke a bunch of blends and I brought a few things that I picked up at uh, Chicago. And one of the things we popped and smoked was this uh, Smoker's Haven Syrian blend, which is uh, Premel's mix of Cyprian and Syrian Latakia. Uh, and that's a limited release for the Chicago Pipe Show. Uh, I think he had like 250 tins or so. And um, I will say I really, really enjoyed the smoke. Um, smooth, mellow English smoke, but it had some really nice sweet notes in it um, and a nice mix of kind of woodsiness and also some caramelly sweetness. Every now and again, I got this really nice caramel flavor out of it. So I'm looking forward to uh, smoking this more and uh, maybe I'll try to do an impression or something on it, even though I know it's um, not that easy to get. So uh, we'll see. All right, the other thing I wanted to mention, we uh, popped and smoked, uh, been waiting to try, is the San Sel Pocro, the new uh, Cornell and Deal small batch, which I know a lot of folks have had, have been able to get. This one seems to be uh, not uh, as crazy as some of the others. I think it's in fact still available. And I will tell you, I know why Rogue Glide Sully loves this blend. Um, so I was really curious to try the Italian Dark Fired. I myself am a big fan of the Perique, love Bayou Morning Flake, but let me tell you, wow. If you are looking for some spice, watch out when you try this. On the first few lights, if you do a nice big retrohale, it will bite you. <laughs> it's like smoking uh, habanero peppers or something. It's just this major burn. Um, and it does subside a bit, I found, through the smoke. Um, but really interesting, um, nice blend. So I'm glad I, I got a few tins of this. I'm glad I did. I'm going to enjoy kind of smoking through this and uh, checking this blend out. Um, but yeah, it's uh, not for the faint of heart. If you don't like that really spicy uh, perique burn, you're definitely not going to like this one. All right. Well, so moving through this one, um, picked up a few things I wanted to share with you guys. I was excited to share. Also this week uh, came in the mail, a uh, little Yabo, and uh, got, the, got the green box here. Uh, you guys know Peterson. And this is something I've been trying to find for a while now. 
and some one of them came up uh, an estate uh, pipe came up and I just could not resist pulling the trigger already got it out of the out of the nice Peterson bag um, and I'm just gonna show it to you guys so here we go see if I make sure this uh, captures this well so this is a Peterson block Meerschaum uh, I'm not sure how well it's gonna come out again with the shade but um, you know been uh, pre-smoked but it looked like it had barely been smoked the stem is just pristine a really nice p-lip stem on it um, and just a, a really really nice uh, Peterson uh, mirror and I am looking forward to trying this pipe out um, just a beautiful mirror and one like I said I've been looking for for a long time now it's got the Peterson logo on it and it does say Peterson block mirror on the bottom I'm not quite sure the date I don't know if they're still making these or not um, it doesn't look that old but I guess it could be um, it's interesting because the stem it's got this little metal uh, tenon there the stem fits into um, so I thought that was uh, different but anyway looking forward to adding that to the collection and smoking it so and then last thing I thought I'd share with you guys breezing through this uh, it was uh, something else I picked up uh, last week that came in the mail and that is a tin of the RJ uh, Germain's Royal Jersey Perique mixture and this one's from 2004 so as you can see it's a pretty uh, pretty old tin um, cool good one for the collection and I'm um, looking forward to I haven't tried this one yet so this is going to be a fun one to pop and try as well so that'll be uh, definitely doing a future uh, future impressions on that one all right well got through that pretty quick been uh, another thing I was going to share been working on the uh, on the garden a bit more my wife and I but as you can see we got some hay bales here we laid some hay down on the garden and it was pretty stunted with all the rain but just started to really take off and grow and I thought maybe uh, give you guys a quick view of the garden show you guys all the work going on there and uh, hopefully some good uh, some good uh, fruit vegetables uh, coming soon uh, so give you guys a quick look at that and I'll pop right back and we'll uh, get to the review so if you don't want to see that you can just fast forward to this part but I thought you know share a little bit with you guys it's such a beautiful day so all right we'll be right back we're back giving you guys a little view of the garden as I promised we decided to go with some raised beds this year. My wife did a great job getting those all in and planted. Um, and as you can see, not, not a huge uh, garden this year, but the soil was needing a little rest. So we went with some raised beds and soil and uh, looking forward to seeing that grow. Plants are really starting to take, uh, uh, take growth now. Hopefully I uh, get the tomato plants going, got some peppers in the back there, cucumbers, whatnot, and uh, got the hay down, as I said. And, Finn's doing a little inspection, <laughs> making sure to keep the critters out. So there you go, a little view of the garden, guys. All right, all right, we're back. On um, with the show. Drinking a little iced coffee here, which is going really well with this cherry cream flake. Mm. All right, so let's talk about Gowith and Hogarth cherry cream flake. Again, I've been really enjoying this blend, uh, this flake, and uh, really enjoying the Gowith and Hogarth blends in general kind of getting in that cycle of uh, my uh, pipe smoking where I'm starting to experiment with more of the European and uh, certainly getting more into the Lakeland, so it's kind of expanding the palette. And this is definitely a Lakeland blend, so we'll just start off right there. Um, maybe I'll, um, what I want to do is give you guys a quick look at the tobacco reviews uh, on this one, so here you go. We're back. So um, as uh, Tobacco Review said, this is a Gowith and Hogarth Virginia Flake with a cherry cream topping and uh, listed as an aromatic. Got a lot of reviews on there. And I will say this one, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this guys because uh, I think, you know, um, I mean, Jimmy Inks, you guys know, if you look at Tobacco Reviews, he's the guy you always go check out, right? And he did a fantastic job describing this tobacco. Um, you know, I always like reading his reviews, but this one really hit the nail on the head. So I'm going to put the link down below and I'm also going to put a link down to Uncle Phil's seller, Uncle Phil, Phil, <laughs> shout out to Phil in the UK. Uh, Phil did a really nice job reviewing this tobacco as well. And interestingly, um, so in the US, this is Gowith and Hogarth uh, Cherry Cream Flake. And it is a flake. It comes in some pretty big flakes. You can only get it in bulk here. And I think as Phil said, uh, because of uh, the crazy regulations in the, in Europe, uh, they had to change the name because, you know, you don't want kids off trying to 
eat the cherry cream flake. Um, and uh, I think they changed it to Kendall CC flake. And uh, it does come, like I said, in big flakes. I've got it uh, chopped up and Kevin Hendricks was nice enough to send me in a sample and I liked it so much. I you know, was mad out trying to find some in the US and I managed to find the last two ounces at Mars Cigars. Um, and so I was able to get some from them and I cut it up uh, like Kevin did and put it back in this jar. I'm just gonna show you guys a flake and these have some really nice crystals on them, by the way. I'm sure it's not gonna show in the camera, but um, give you guys a look, just a nice Gallith and Hogarth, what you would expect from them. Nice looking Virginia flake. Um, and as I said, some I can see the crystals in the sun. So it's a little bit of age on this. And um, so it's interesting for me, when I smell the tin note of this, you know, you really do get kind of that Lakeland perfumey, soapy kind of uh, flavor hit you and a smell note hit you. And I, I like it um, quite a bit. Though originally I wasn't a fan of Lakeland's, it's, it's I'm really starting to come around on it. And it, um, it does have this nice cherry, subtle kind of cherry note that's mixed in with the Lakeland. And you do get, I guess, kind of some vanilla, maybe cream flavor. I don't really get a lot of the Virginia at all from the tin note. It's really overpowered by the Lakeland and the cherry uh, flavoring. And I know when I, I let some of the guys at the pipe club smell this and I said, oh, it's not that bad. It's a subtle Lakeland. And they smelled it and I'm like, oh, this is cherry soap. So I guess to each their own. Um, but again, if you don't like Lakelands, uh, you're definitely not gonna like this. Um, but what you get out of this smoke, um, kind of from the you know, uh, moisture, it's a little moist. So you definitely need to let it dry a bit more than 15, 20 minutes, probably like an hour or more um, to dry it out well. Um, and it, uh, you know, it packs, burns. I tend to uh, do a fold and stuff and just crumble some on top, if you guys can see. But every smoke I've had of this has burned nicely and burned down to a nice white ash. Uh, and I will say when you first light it, it tends to be a bit hot. And if you really train on it, it can get hot on you and you'll lose some of the flavor. Um, so I tend to light it, get it going, and then let it sit a bit and then come back relight it and smoke it and it, it seems to kind of calm down and smoke better for me and I've been pretty consistent I've smoked it in uh, a couple cobs because of the Lakeland I've stayed away from my briar other briars and mostly dedicated this pipe to this blend or to Lakelands and um, the flavor is um, pretty straightforward what I will tell you what I get from this is a nice kind of subtle or I should say a nice Lakeland flavor on top uh, and it's not super strong. It's not like Ennerdale Flake. It's just a nice, um, subtle, mellow Lakeland flavor, pretty consistent through the smoke. And then you'll also get those hints of cherry and cream on the retro hail uh, and, in the, and in the note itself. Um, most of the, when you're smoking and exhaling, most you, you do get um, a fair amount of Lakeland. It just has those hints of cherry. And it's not this chemically sweet cherry. It's really just this nice, subtle cherry flavor that's there that you can sense it. So it's not your typical, if you want a cherry aromatic, like a, um, one sec, sorry about that, we're back. So as I was saying, I think uh, you get this really nice Lakeland flavor throughout the smoke and it is a very consistent smoke. I don't really get a lot of difference uh, throughout the, uh, the bowl itself and uh, the, uh, the cherry, as I was saying, is not this sweet aromatic cherry, so you're not going to get that if that's what you're looking for. Um, what I think this is, you know, probably similar if you've tried the Bob's Chocolate Flake. I know the first time I had that was way too early in my uh, pipe smoking experience, and I thought, ah, oh, sounds great, chocolate, you know. And I got that Lakeland that, that was really overpowering, and the chocolate was very subtle, and I didn't like it. And uh, I'm definitely going to go back and revisit that now because this is very similar, and I would say it's, it's uh, a good kind of crossover Lakeland. It's uh, one if you're trying, if you have started getting into Lakelands or if you want to get into Lakelands and try them but don't want that super overpowering Lakeland flavor like you get from Ennerdale, so, then uh, I would say uh, this is a good one to try, um, try your hand at. So um, that's kind of the way I look at it as a kind of crossover Lakeland, crossover aromatic. And it's my style of aromatic too, um, other than the Lakeland, you know, really nice, subtle, cherry and cream notes throughout the smoke, um, some vanilla. I know um, 
you can also, if you really take your time and sip on it, I guess every now and again, you'll get some, can kind of pick out the Virginia notes, the kind of grassy hay, kind of Goweth uh, Virginia, but it is uh, hard to pick out and it's mostly overpowered by the Lakeland and the uh, cherry cream topping. So there you go, guys. That is my long overdue, quick Im review impression of Goweth and Hogarth uh, cherry, so I get that right, cherry cream flake. And I'm a fan. I'm definitely going to be trying to get some more. I was uh, uh, lucky enough to get uh, our friend Simon to uh, get some for me from the UK. So you may have seen that if you saw his uh, Nottingham Pipe Show video. Uh, I had asked him to, to try to find some for me since I know it's readily available there. So I'm happy to have some bulk coming to me, but I know when it's, uh, whenever it comes back in the US, I'll probably get some more as well. Um, Cause I really enjoy it. It's my kind of aromatic when I want something sweet with a little flavor to it. And I also like it in the morning uh, when I'm hiking or walking with the dog, um, just to you know puff on and have some nice uh, flavor or something uh, if I want that cherry flavor. But uh, all right, well, I'm gonna wrap this one up. I know I've, I've gone long, guys. I wanted to try to get a few things in, do a little bit of a chat, had a lot to share. Um, and I'm gonna be trying to get a few more videos out. I still need to do my showdown coming up. And one thing I didn't show you guys, which I'm excited about, is the next round of Briar Blues, a mystery review. Uh, he's, we've got review number six, uh, challenge number six, and he sent us some very interesting looking tobacco. So I'm gonna you know, I'll, uh, get a video together for that and uh, look forward to sharing that with you guys. But I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their weekend out there. Hope you guys have a great week ahead. Until next time, I will finish my bowl of cherry cream flake. Enjoy the rest of this beautiful Sunday and wish you all tight lines. Happy smokes, take care.